Hi, this is Simone and today I am sharing an up close and personal look at dominant industry autumn forest. First up, just sharing it right now, I noticed that after this ink journal entry and after using it in a pen, this color is definitely not the right color for me. But let's start from the beginning. The company that this is from is Dominant Industry. Um, and in, I tr have heard both Dominant Industries and Dominant Industry. I looked it up. It is Dominant Industry. Um, Autumn Forest is part of their pearl series. It has a shimmering and pearlescent finish. And the ink comes in a 25 milliliter bottles. I read on Vanessa's site that the inks are pH neutral. So that means that these inks can be used in resin and celluloid pens. I also found that Dominant Industry is a small ink company that was founded in 2021 in South Korea. And I have not, I don't have a bottle of those, of their inks, just a sample. But if you have seen their bottles, they are one of the most unique bottles and definitely on the more, on the prettier side for sure. Um, it is a teardrop shape with a thick glass bottom that, that just looks very stylish and amazing. So. Autumn Forest is a shimmer ink with red shimmer and the base color is green. When I do these up close and personal ink explorations, what I have been doing in recent months, or this is how I have established uh, the way that I explore these inks, inks is I um, create a writing sample with various different nib sizes. I try to use extra fine, um, fine, medium and a broad nib. Sometimes that is skewed a bit. Sometimes I have a fine, medium, broad and a stub nib, but uh, I want to see the, the ink over a various range of uh, nib sizes. And that's usually the first thing, thing that I create because I put that on the left side of a double page spread in my Hobonichi A6. My ink journal, that's what I call this, where I do these explorations inside is an old Hobonichi um, A6 that I had purchased um, at a reduced price and just kept for future for the future i wanted to use this if i needed a notebook and it really lends itself nicely to be an ink, ink exploration ink journal uh, so i i use four pages um, i use the first page of the spread for the writing sample. I tend to do uh, five lines with the smaller nib sizes and then it's probably four lines or five lines with the broad nib size just because um, with the broader nibs I can't keep my handwriting small enough to fit in the grid of the um, Hobonichi and so it just gets bigger and then there is not enough space. And then on the right side I um, make a really big ink splotch. I just use a syringe, uh, get some of the ink into the syringe and then splotch it on there and then I just use my mouth and um, move the ink around and here I showed you that when I inked this pen I did not realize that I, I, I'm using a shimmer ink and so I did not agitate the ink sample and 
as far as I can tell from my writing, there is no shimmer whatsoever in that um, cartridge. And that's that's a thing with me currently. I seem to not notice that an ink has shimmer because there's so little shimmer in the sample that um, I realize when I look closer at the ink. So, well, that's a thing apparently with me. I, um, I've been drawn to these greens before. This is a very olivey, olivey, almost brown green ink. And I, if you remember, I have Aurora and Klingner Alt Gold Grün. I have Robert Oster Tea Time. Both of those inks are very, very similar to each other um, and just are barely distinguishable. Uh, this one is from that same color family, but is a lot more muted. Um, and I think that's the reason why I don't really like it. It to me, it kind of looks like mud water. But um, so I used the second half of the spread for um, a ink splotch. I write down an affirmation that I pick from a card deck. I obviously write down the ink name so I will know what this spread is all about. Then I I also make a chromatography. That was what I did in the beginning. And here you can see how I make that ink splotch. And then I just move it around with my mouth. Um, well, not with my mouth. I uh, blow on it. And that's what moves the ink around. Um, and then I, uh, what else do I do? I make a grid for a water test. And then I also make add rectangles at the bottom where I layer the ink once, twice, and three times. On the second page, usually the ink splotch bleeds through onto the other side. So I basically only write down when and where I got the ink from. I write down uh, who, which friend sent it to me Mostly it's my friend Amy and uh, when they send it to me and or if it's a bottle and not a sample, um, what milliliter size the bottle is and when I got it and where I got it from. And then there is one page left. That page I use to add all the fountain pens that I ink up with this ink um, and then just to see how the ink performs in different pens and nib sizes. I am a bit torn at the moment if I should continue doing that in this notebook because I am not documenting all the inks that I have inked in my fountain pens in this notebook. Not because I don't want to, just because this takes quite some time and I'm doing, I'm dabbling in so many different creative projects that um, I just don't get to exploring all this time around. I have 11 pens inked, I think. Yes, 11 pens. And so I don't get around to um, inking up or exploring all of those inks in depth like that. So now I'm doing the water test. For the, for the water test, I set a timer for, ten, for one minute. I move the ink around a tiny bit and then I dab it up with a paper towel. Um, I also leave, when I put in the chromatography strip for my uh, chromatography. I also uh, set a timer for one minute just to make sure that when I do the chromatography that I wet each strip um, 
for the same amount of time. This helps me, in my opinion, uh, to be able to compare similar colors more uh, better. Because um, I, in the beginning, when I did the first chromatographies, I used to um, leave it in for five minutes. And then there was barely any color left. And so now I'm doing it for one minute for the same amount of time for all of those just to make sure that um, I can I have a more comparable um, chromatography strip. Not that any of this is super scientific, but if I am keeping the parameters fairly similar, then it's more comparable. I'm curious to know if you have used this ink, if you own a full bottle, um, let me know how you like the ink. How does the shimmer perform? Is it just my sample or is it me that just doesn't like this? This is the chromatography strip and I really love the colors. They're super autumnal and I mean, well, it's called autumn forest. What am I? Who am I kidding? This is the perfect autumn ink for sure. Let me know how what pen you have used it in, in how you like it. Um, I guess I'm the exception and lots of people love this ink. I have heard so many good reviews. Um, it's probably me. It's always me. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, you're the reason why I make those videos. See you soon. Bye.